Uh, I don't think anybody ever knows if they're ready to, to, for your first fight. Uh, I, I think my first few fights, um, there was not a lot of training. So it was, hey, do you want to fight? And some people are, are just crazy enough to stand up and, and raise their hand. But um, I could tell you I didn't train much for my first fight. I could tell you that. But uh, it is one of those things where it was, I started training like it was a hobby. It was fun. Um, never anticipated making it a career, but uh, you found out I, I was pretty good at it, and, and it kind of went off from there. That's it. it is all over. Outstanding. That's a huge, huge victory for Jake Ellenberger. Um, upbringing was it was great. I, I grew up in Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska. Um, I, I got two brothers, twin brother and an older brother. Um, close close family. We, uh, but uh, yeah, I played a lot of sports growing up. Was involved in a lot of a lot of outdoor stuff. Uh, Boy Scouts, camping, fishing. Um, but yeah, I, I had a great great childhood and and uh, competitive. With, uh, with 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 two brothers about the same about the same age, a twin brother and older brother. So that was literally the next question I was about to ask you. Like, were you pretty competitive with your brother? Yeah, yeah. No, so uh, you know, I got into MMA like most do as a fan. I, I used to watch watch UFCs, watch watch fighting before it really became mainstream. Uh, my brother, my brother Joe, was a huge fan. A big, he was a big Tito Ortiz fan in high school. He was a big fan of the UFC. Um, but no, I didn't start actually wrestling until. Um, after I was competing in MMA, um, when I was growing up in, in uh, Nebraska, I, I went to University of Nebraska Omaha, and I, I ended up walking on to the wrestling team there in college. Um, I think I had had maybe four or five years of, of uh, MMA experience already, but uh, yeah, wrestling really helped kind of close some of the some of the gaps, some of the weaknesses that I had at the time. 2005, it was really kind of the boom of MMA, and the UFC became more mainstream. Um, but yeah, it was it was certainly a different a different time period, a different era back then, because there was still not a lot of not all the states had athletic commissions, uh, a governing body. Um, even in Nebraska, when I first started fighting, it hadn't been sanctioned yet. I should say, completely um, transparent and sanctioned. So. It was an interesting time, but it was still an educational time for people to understand what MMA is. Uh, but yeah, for me, as a fan, it was an exciting time, you know, seeing like the Chuck Liddell, Randy Couture, um, and being of George St. Pierre. Like there was a lot of just watching, a lot of interest growing at the time. But yeah, for me, I mean, I, I when I first started fighting, it was just a, just a love for the competition in martial arts. and. I mean, there was times where I fought for fifty dollars. There was times when I fought for a hundred dollars. You know, we, we we had fought in a, a barn a few times. Um, we used to go up to Sioux Falls and fight um, every week if you wanted to. So there there was a few of those times where it was just you were literally making no money, but it was just because you loved it. IFL was you know the IFL was a, it was a fun time period. Um, I, I met a lot of I had a lot of relationships um, through the IFL. Um, you know, meeting Henzo Gracie, and and I had trained and, and done a lot with Pat Militage, um, and then even with Matt Linlin, starting uh, training at Team Quest up in Portland. So I really kind of expanded my network at the time, and, and got introduced to lots of different types of uh, trainers and, and and other training partners, which was which was interesting. But uh, yeah, I, I had fought too for Pat Militage's team in the IFL once. Um, as well as Matt Lillen's team for, for the Wolfpack, but there was a, it, it was, it was kind of a, a great idea. It was a great, in theory, I think it was a little bit ahead of the time. And as far as a business, it wasn't ready to, I don't think it was ready um, business-wise to meet kind of the ambition of the, of the executives there. Winning and losing is really, it's just very different in, in MMA than any other sport, because there's, there's really no, Finger pointing, it's you know, the accountability is completely on you, um, and, and a lot of it comes down to preparation, preparation, tra strategy, tactics. I mean, even nowadays when I look back and I'm I'm coaching guys now and moving forward, so much goes into strategy and tactics and game plan. But uh, 
you know, there's always things you look back and say, oh, I could have done this different, A, B, and C, but um, it is, it's, it's one of those really uh, losing, it, it, it is, you got high highs and low lows, but um, you got to just keep moving forward. And, and, you know, that's, whenever you get into a, comp a one on one competition, you know, there's one, someone's going to get their hand raised and someone's not. And then you got to, you know, you got to learn to deal with that. I think it's one of those things where um, if you want people to celebrate you and your victory, you have to be able to accept defeat. And um, it, it's tough. It's kind of what you do with that. I mean, it's, again, failing forward, um, finding out what you can do better, where you can how you can prepare better, but uh, it, it, it teaches you a lot about life, it really does. You know, when you're in your early and mid-20s, it's, it's, it's tough, let's be honest. I mean, you look at most typical early and mid-20-year-olds, they're not going to sleep at night waking up early to work hard. It's just not, it's not common. So, I mean, for me, I really wanted to separate myself, and I, and I did. It was just discipline really is what it came down to. It was staying disciplined in every aspect of your life, but... Uh, yeah, I don't regret anything. I had I had a great time. I had um, some really exceptional opportunities, uh, main, main eventing for the UFC, and then you know getting my hand raised, um, breaking into that top five, top four of the world. So I, I have some great things to reflect on. Do you wish you kind of would have? I mean, at that time, do you, looking back now, do you wish you would have retired sooner? Do you feel like you had a lot left in the tank after that fight, or when did you know you were done? That, that that's a tough question. I mean. Especially when you have close fights with a lot of the, a lot of the top guys. I mean, um, you know, so much of it comes to comes back to strategy and tactics, and and not being so um, skill centric in a way, um, relying on one thing. But um, it really opens your mind. I mean, I mean, that's a tough question as far as when it's time to move on. I think. Uh, it's just one of those tough, those tough conversations you got to have with yourself. But you know, even for me, I, I've had a lot of people that are um, brutally honest with me. A lot of a lot of people, um, even even not nowadays. I mean, I, I will not certainly not name any names, but it's it's hard for people to admit they're not the fighter they once were or they used to be. I mean, that's that's a hard conversation for anybody. But um, you know, time <laughs> time's not on our side. It's just that's just the reality. But. Um, yeah, I had some I had some fights where I was just more upset with not putting enough preparation and, and strategy into it. But uh, yeah, I certainly don't regret anything. I, I had uh, an incredible amount of opportunity and definitely grateful for that.